All right, this is one of my homemade pollen patties. It's made from 100% real pollen that I stole from my bees last summer. Uh, it's basically a mixture of that pollen, all ground up, with some fondant that was melted and then hardened. And now it's, I wouldn't say this is, this is sort of like, it's sort of halfway between fondant and hard candy in terms of its consistency. Let's take a look. Okay. I don't think they're running out of honey. But you can see they, this is the fondant I gave them a while ago, quite a while ago now, and they've eaten through the whole thing. So let's just get rid of that. I'm doing this very quickly. I'm trying to be quick anyway, because... Go. I'm just gonna put that over there and they can do whatever they want with it. And it's still lots of bees. I, I assume they've got lots of honey. So I will put this right here, above where, where the cluster seems to be most concentrated, and I might put some fondant on it later. And this is my the inside of my cover. And you can see there is a bit of condensation right here that I have, and I have this taped up with duct tape so the bees can't chew into it. This part is uh, was shot, was pecked at by a northern flicker or a woodpecker. And, yeah, you can see a little bit of moisture on the sides. Oh, look at that mold right there. But I guess that comes with having a condensing hive. I will probably give them more fondant because I'm just not sure how much honey they have. I could probably figure out how much honey they have by the weight of it, but I don't lift my, I don't lift my hives. So, cause I, I, like, I like my back the way it is. It looks good up there. But what if that's all it is? What if I'm only the bees that are up there? These are the only bees in the hive. They're just the, that little layer that I saw up there. It looks good, but how far does that cluster go down is the question. I scraped out some bees. And there's a fair number of dead bees in the bottom. Let's just look, show you. See, these bees too, they haven't been coming down the bottom, but I think because the, there's, there's just naturally the dead bees are accumulating on the bottom and they're blocking the entrance. So, I don't know, i always a little bit skeptical about beekeepers who have small entrances to, to keep mice out and because the bees in the, in the natural environment, like in a hollow log, would have a small entrance. I don't know, those small entrances get clogged up pretty quickly. Unless you have like a, like like this. This is, this is a hole where they can assume there are no bees clogging up that hole. No. Anyway, so I've opened up that hole, let them get out for cleansing flights, and that's it. No smoke, no nothing. Um, I'll probably drop by later with some fondant, just to give them, just because I'm not sure how much honey they have. However, this is both fondant and pollen. I would say I don't remember the exact measurements, to be honest, um, but this is probably half fondant. It's the fondant that's keeping this held together in this shape, so there's sugar there if they need it. Sugar and pollen. Anyway, it's about, uh, I think it's three degrees Celsius, but it feels much colder because we've, we're basically living on a, a glacier, right? There's, there's so much snow everywhere, it's just, it's creating cold air. So, speaking of a glacier, here we go. <clears throat> I'm really surprised that this nuke is still alive. Uh, I'd like to put in some... Uh, I'd like to open up and see what's going on, but I haven't been able to open it up for a while, quite a while, because it's ratcheted down with that ratchet strap, and the, uh, the ratchet itself, the, the whatever, the handle, is buried in the snow. Neck down to the bottom of the hive, so that's that. This is my poly hive. I'm not particularly uh, fond of the, these dead bees down here. They look kind of cruddy, kind of poopy. And there is a bit of uh, a little bit of dark poop 
around this hive. Some dark poop is just, I think means that they're pooping up more stuff that needs to go. The darker, the worse it is, right? And if it's lighter colored poop, it's not as bad. I'm curious what the bees are doing inside this hive. I haven't been able to open the top for a while. Uh, I don't think they're running out of honey, but I do think the bottom boxes are, they're empty of bees. If, if the bees are anywhere, they're probably in these two boxes. Um, the last time I did check though, they were, they were still below most of the honey in this top box. I don't know when that was, it was a month or so ago. And I've got trees, the snow is pushing the trees into the hive. And it's a bit tricky. So, let's just take a look. Um, all I plan to do is add this homemade pollen patty to the top. And just, I want to see what they're doing. Hopefully I'm not going to find lots of dark poop over the top frames. I'm a little bit worried about that. And if I do find anything that looks like disease, I have a plan. But anyway, the main thing is just get these this pollen on them, this 100% natural pollen. Um, normally, you try to time your pollen to be six weeks before the bees get out to forage. And this is a bit early, but this is next to my high, my house and, and easy to monitor what's going on. If I need to give them uh, more space, which I don't think I will, but if I need to give them more food, more syrup or anything like that to keep them going, if I artificially boost the population with this pollen, then I can do it easily because it's right next to my house. So this is, I'm going to try to be as quick as possible with this. And hopefully the bees won't come flying out my face. Okay, there they are. This is crazy. Right here. That's a slug that's been living in that hive, I guess, all winter. These bees are not moving much. I see some mold over here. They have plenty of honey. I'm just giving them a smell. Sometimes it's good to smell the hive. It smells like poop. Nope, they're okay. So, let's see if I can put this pollen patty on without killing too many bees. There we go. That's that. Oh, that's great. That doesn't... I gotta put a rim on that. I have put uh, pollen patties and fondant on this hive before. And you could just squish it down because the pollen and the patties were, so were soft. But these homemade ones are hard. And so that I can't squish them down into the frames. So... I gotta make room for them by adding a rim. Which isn't exactly what this hive was made to do. And this is okay. There's no... The, the, these poly hives are still new to me, so I don't like that kind of mold. And that seems to happen with uh, hives that have condensation. And this is a condensing hive. See the way this is working, it's not, I don't think it's made for a rim. Yeah, that's not ideal. Anyway, hopefully that'll work. Yeah, and that's see, you can't, you can't add a, an, an easy rim on top of this, this type of poly hive anyway. It goes together like Lego, so unless you have a piece of this exact type of hive, it doesn't work. This is the problem with uh, buying into a certain type of hive design. Once you do it, all your old gear just doesn't doesn't fit anymore, and you, you're you're stuck with that one design. That's, that's why I don't buy into. I just I just don't want to do it. I don't want to buy into the Apame and all these other new revolutionary hive designs because then I'm stuck in with their system, and it's less flexible for doing improvising things like this. Anyway, so there's a bit of a uh, bit of poop there and I think once they get um, once this snow is melted, this glacier has disappeared, I will do a test of these bees under the microscope 
uh, if I can pull, once it's warm enough to pull a frame, and I'll pull out some bees and see what kind of uh, things they've got grown in their guts. And if they, if it's all clean, I'll leave them alone. And if it isn't clean, I'll give them some syrup, clear, clean, thin syrup to clean out their guts. This is the third hive next to my house. The fourth is a is a nuke. <clears throat> so we got some bees getting out, pooping again. Let's just see how many dead bees we got down here. Oh yeah, it's funny you can see. They're, these bees are still... Okay, hold on, what's this? Hold on. This is white stuff. That looks like sugar. Um, yeah, they're still favoring this side of the hive. I can see there's uh, They're eating, they're digging into their honey and I can see the debris from the honeycomb. And the combs, the campings. Here they go. So, the last time I checked on this hive, uh, I could hear the bees chewing through this insulation because there's a hole in the inner cover that I forgot to cover up. So they're just trying to get out. And, uh, and I, I suspect I'm going to see at least a hole dug into that insulation right there. So let's see what we see. Oh my god, no. Huh. Well, a little bit right there because I got holes over here. A little bit of digging there, but no, well, I thought they would, I could swear I, I heard them chewing. Well, huh, cool. So here they are, right there. Let me just smell them. Ooh, yeah, it doesn't smell poopy at all. It smells like wax and honey, which is what you want to smell. Hello here, you can see moisture. Where's that moisture coming from? I suspect it's coming from outdoors. Not from the bees. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to be really quick with this. I don't have my hive tool, so I'm just going to use this thing. Yeah, I hate that sound. Whoa. Okay, not too bad. Okay, they got lots of honey. And I don't see any poop. And they smell like wax, so that's good. Here we go. Now this is the hard part. Putting this, sliding this on without squishing any bees. Oh, go away. Go away. Go away. I'll figure. I, I, I don't have a smoker. I should have a smoker. Now I think. Come on, the other way. Just trying to make sure they get out of the way. Get out of the way. Come on. Okay. So this is okay. Lots of honey. You can see right there. Oh, I can see. There's lots of capped honey. And now they got a little bit of pollen. Give them a little boost. I think there's a lot of bees in this hive. Look. All right. Let's just see. <coughs> yep. That's no problem. All right. Very good. I am pleased, which is always nice. So there, there, there they go, a little bit of pollen. Let's see if they're eating it. See if we can catch them eating it. No, no, whatever. Oh, I didn't, no, didn't take long to poop. Um, so look, no, there's moisture on the edges here. Okay, cool. They're not too active. None of these seem very active today. I think it's about 2.30 in the afternoon. I have uh, a couple of other... I have one other colony that's had a lot of bees going into winter. And this one is... This is in the same category. They're both really looking good. Lots of dead bees down there. But I, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, at least there's... What is it? Caretaker bees that pull all the dead bees out. So I think that's mostly what that is. I don't see any poop inside the hive. I don't smell any poop inside the hive. I smell honey and waxy smells, which is all good. They're getting out, I guess, for their cleansing flights. They're not, they're not too constipated. And again, really nice that it's just, it's, it's such a, this is not an elaborate setup at all. It, there was, there's no wrap on this hive at all. 
just that top insulation and ventilation down bottom. And that's it. Uh, in terms of daylight and what kind of heat it gets or sunshine it gets, right now it's getting sunshine. But for most of the winter, the sun is very low on the horizon and it barely cracks. You might get a little bit of sun right over there once in a while, but it's basically in the shade all the time. Except for right now, it's starting to get a little bit of sun. You know, you wouldn't think this is an ideal spot because even in the summertime, the sun doesn't hit this hive until, you know, 10 o'clock, 10.30, because it still comes up this way and, it's, and it comes through right here. Uh, but, I don't know, so far so good. I would have all of my hives out in my front yard if it was socially acceptable, but it's not, and I'm not allowed to do that, so I'm not doing it. I'll leave that, that top entrance open for maybe the, the next hour. Uh, I don't want to let out too much heat. Look at that. What are these bees doing? There must be a crack in the hive right there. And they're just sort of fanning. Or oh, let's just take a look. Oh yeah, wow. See, that is cool. You can't, I don't know, yeah, you definitely can't see this stuff on the camera, but there's a frame, two frames right there in that hole. And right between the space between those frames is a bunch of bees. It's just loaded with bees, so the cluster is there. And this must be a crack. There must be, uh, that must not have a good propolis seal. Look at this, look at the, the warp in that wood. More wood that I bought locally. That's all warped which isn't the case for most of it, but I definitely got a bad batch. Oh yeah, well, they're, okay. they're coming out now. I'll let them, I'll let them do that. You know what, and I, I think I will just plug up that top entrance. Here we go. Here's my fancy plug. Oh, hold on. There we go. There. Okay. Bees pooping everywhere. And we've got some rain in the forecast that should wash all that bee poop away, which I like. I like that idea, so that if there is any kind of nosema lingering in the bee poop or anything, the bees won't land on it and pick it up and bring it back to the hive. It looks like they have plenty of honey. I could confirm that there's at least, you know, three frames of capped honey up there, so they're not going to starve immediately. No risk there. Now they've got this homemade pollen patty that's got a bit of sugar and 100% pollen in it. And I'm really curious if they're gonna like that pollen or not. But they're good, I can, I can leave them alone for the next two weeks and they're gonna have nothing to worry about there. Now I'm gonna go check on my hives in the magic forest, if I can manage it. One of my hives in the magic forest, as I call it. And I don't like what I see because there's too many dead bees falling to the bottom of this hive. No, see that? The, the, this, this mesh is caked with poop. Not good. Never good. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I'm smelling poop. Yeah, I'm concerned about this hive. Look, oh, you see these, these pupae. Something happened. They got cold or whatever. Yep, not good, not good. I really don't want to see them die. Look at the, look at the pupa. Yeah, I don't like that. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. Last time I checked on this hive, there was a hole. Yeah, <laughs> still there. Up top, but it's hidden behind the... I can hear them too. Anyway, hold on. This is so they look okay. Not, not a lot of dead bees clogging up the bottom. And it doesn't smell like poop. All right, that's not too bad. All right, I'm gonna film this on my cell phone because my regular camera is just a bit too awkward at the moment. I don't like what I'm seeing. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Let's just see. Oh, okay. Lots of bees. Let's just see here. Okay. That's interesting. They look good. Yeah, lots of honey. Okay. All right, good enough. All right, I'm done. Just gonna put that insulation back on. So it looks like that, uh, 
that duct tape is doing the trick. They're not chewing through the insulation. All right, this one's a bit funkier and trickier. They've already got a hole up top, so they're already sort of coming and going in a messy way. So let's just see. Come on. Whoop. Boy, it's funny. You, you lift it up and you just hear the hear the bees. And a lot of sound of a lot of bees. Okay. I'm going to take a quick look. All right, that's a lot of bees. And I don't know how much honey they have. So I'm going to put that back. And I'm going to come back in a day or two, possibly later today, put a rim on that and give them some fondant just to be safe. But still, a lot of bees. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, I don't know if I was recording then. I may not have. But uh, I put the entrance on this hive. I took the entrance out and there was no, not much dead bees collected down there. Loads and loads and loads of bees, it looked like. I'm probably gonna put some fondant on them just to be safe. I think they're good, but I'm just gonna be safe. I'm gonna check my records to see if they, how much honey they had going into winter. Um, I think they're good. I'm not giving them any pollen or anything like that that could increase their brood production because I, I can't, I'm not able to monitor these hives closely. So if the population explodes and I have to give them syrup or something else to keep them alive, I, I just, I could miss that window and they could starve. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna let them do their own thing. And these ones, again, they had plenty of honey, but not as many bees. And it's funny, this is exactly what I saw going into the fall, or going into the winter. This was a small colony, small cluster, brand new queen. Uh, she inherited that small cluster, and they're still small. Um, but it looks like she was laying and has been laying. So I think, uh, given the chance, this, this colony should build up quickly. Uh, this one was big going into the fall, and it still is big right now. And that seems to be the case with uh, Another colony that I have next to my house is just a big cluster and it's going into the winter and a big cluster coming out of the winter. So, hooray! As long as they've got honey, they're fine. Um, this looks a little bit messy. Uh, I had these boards uh, laid out front like this for a while because I didn't want snow clogging the entrances. And the snow is melting. So, and we've got a big hunk of rain coming tomorrow and the next day. So. That should melt all that snow. So, other than getting some nice ventilation down there, they don't really need it. I think they're fine just the way it is. This is all, I got bits of duct tape taped everywhere because I had this duct tape. I was using the duct tape to seal in the, uh, the sides of the uh, insulation and all this stuff, and I'm just not even gonna bother putting it back on. Because I don't see any cracks. Uh, you know, it's a good seal. And it's cool to see that the uh, that um, the duct tape that I put on the underside of the insulation worked well. The bees didn't chew into it. So, score one from my team.